Well, thank you very much for this kind introduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, meine Damen und Herren, I'd like to start with a few thoughts. Additive manufacturing and additive extrusion in particular have evolved further and further during the past years and decades. It is by the time now a well-established process in industrial application. We all know it. We all kind of love it. That's why we are here this week. However, we need to see that additive manufacturing is not a cure-all solution for every imaginable problem that we might be facing. There are other processes from the world of metal manufacturing, from polymer processing, or even woodworking that might fit way better, be, uh, depending, um, yeah, depending on the structure in question. Today, Mark Lügel from SWNS and I, Eric Johansson from the German Aerospace Center, we want to show you how the Empower X consortium has chosen to strictly follow the approach to use the most suitable material and the most suitable process um, at the correct way and in the correct structure. With this, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to our presentation, enabling additive functionalization by overprinting in a collaborative environment. To begin with, um, just a very quick introduction into Empower AX. What is it actually? Empower AX is um, an innovation lab uh, yeah, organized by the German Aerospace Center. It's a network of roughly 30 partners, companies and institutions, ranging from technology providers, which are machine builders, which are material providers, uh, which are software specialists. Um, and on the other hand, uh, we have the technology users who um, give the use cases into this network. The use cases can be from rail, can be from transportation, health, leisure, whatsoever. Here you can see some, uh, some insights from our Empower X day from last year. Um, here we discuss technologies, we've shown each other what we are working on. Uh, but most importantly, uh, an idea was born. Uh, the idea was born with one sheet of paper. Um, and it was actually, uh, why don't we show what we are capable of? Um, why don't we show what additive extrusion is capable of? So the idea arose, um, let's take a composite shell, and why not print onto that? Uh, why don't we functionalize a composite shell or a, a, a structure that is already there? So. We defined a use case, which is, in this case, from aerospace application. This is basically an airbrake structure. So uh, you have to imagine a jet aircraft lands. Uh, there is a flap that opens up, and there is a wind load of 360 kilometers per hour on that. Uh, you can imagine that a very thin composite structure will not be able to withstand that force. So we need some kind of reinforcement behind that. And uh, the design for the additive functionalization by overprinting um, has been done by Prime Aerostructures. They did a topology optimization here, so they defined the build volume. Uh, they got the results from this topology optimization, and by engineering knowledge and engineering understanding, they converted that to a, a 3D model that is printable. Uh, we also assessed, of course, shear strength and deformation, and it was all fine with this specific structure. So manufacturing started. Um, we at the DLR, we started with the um, CFRP shell structure. Um, any expert of you uh, who is uh, deeply into composites will see this is quite a basic, standard, uh, conventional composite process. But here's one clue. The top layer consists of polyether imide. Polyether imide is a thermoplastic polymer. It is soluble in epoxy resin, which means we have quite a firm bond between this layer and the composite part. And on the other hand, as I said, it's a thermoplastic polymer, which means we can print on it. And when I say printing, um, that's actually the buzzword. Mark, uh, how do we print? Yeah. 
let me just uh, show you what we did. So uh, SWMS, we are a software company and we are doing uh, pass planning software for additive and also composite processes like AFP, fiber placement and so on. That's what we historically did and nowadays we are also doing slicing for full 3D applications. Uh, what you can see is our uh, uh, ah, yeah. uh, application that we use in this case, it's called Caesar, and you can also see a picture of the simulation environment that we have within the software. Uh, ah. The biggest uh, influence or topic to cover for this printing process is uh, to ensure that we end up having a continuous material flow. So we need to avoid that we have any changes in the acceleration or uh, in the axis movements of the machinery. Talking about the machinery, we are using this uh, Hans Weber additive uh, print end effector in this case and it uses a short fiber reinforced material for the basic geometry and the final layer is uh, endless fiber reinforced and printed on the machine at your site. Um, after the manufacturing of the shell was completed, it was scanned and we transferred the scanned geometry to our software and also added uh, this double curved reinforcement structure to our slicing. The software then takes the machine data like end effector, the robotic system itself consisting of the robot or additional axes like uh, two turntables, linear axis if needed and so on, and also the materi material properties. This all results in a basic uh, simulation that you can see uh, here on the right side. We need this to uh, avoid collisions, be sure that the axis limits are within the range and uh, we need also to check out the material check the material build up and avoid singularities within the simulation process or the manufacturing process in the end what we see here is a pure emulation in the first place so um, this is basically it behaves like the robot but is not the actual robot that we see in the simulation and this is a uh, probably a big problem because it can happen that the robot itself behaves in another way than we can see it here. To avoid those uh, types of problems we use a virtual model of the real robot controller like uh, in this case it would be a KUKA sim or it could also be a virtual NC kernel from the Siemens world or uh, other options from different robot manufacturers. What we then do is we take our initial pass planning that we have seen in the previous slide and uh, feed this to the virtual NC machine and end up having um, yeah, real behavior of the robot. So we end up uh, with the exact timings, with the exact accelerations and also the exact uh, behavior of the machine. That movement and behavior is then fed back to our uh, slicing software where we do a real simulation based on these acceleration and feeding values. When we do this, we can see that we have um, this, uh, yeah, like diagrams for each axis for the robot and what we can also see when we look at the total uh, um, velocity at the manufacturing, we see we have certain positions within the part like this uh, V-shaped uh, geometry where we end up uh, having a local uh, slower manufacturing geometry uh, speed. What we need to do is uh, to adapt the path to make sure that there's no breakdown in the manufacturing process itself. What we did in those cases is that we rounded this corner and we can see on the left side the total velocity uh, is more constant than before. What we now need to uh, take into consideration is that when we change the part like we did, we end up having, um, or when we do it with a constant extrusion, we have this shorter pass in this V-shaped geometry, so we also need to uh, adjust our extrusion parameters. So we need to like lower the extrusion at the V-shape and then turn it back on afterwards. Uh, the 
simulation on the real and C machine allows us also to detect um, yeah, if there are any uh, dissimilarities between uh, or deviations between the plant path and the movement of the machine. And we can use this also to adjust our extrusion parameters to be more and more uh, yeah, like we want it to be. This um, simulation in the real and C environment allows us to uh, enable inspection processes like we see on the right side. So if you just had a look at the thermographical image of the manufacturing, uh, you would see how the machine behaves, but you were not able to uh, um, yeah, assign it or compare it with the plant process. So it is needed to have this uh, plant or pl planning data to yeah, compare the processes in the sim digital and real world. And we did this not only once, the simulation for the basic structure, but also for the uh, final layer with the endless fiber reinforced process. So this was uh, a bit a deep dive in the past planning world uh, to show you what is needed to make sure that you end up with a good result. Um, the software does most of this automatically. So uh, this was yeah, mainly for explanation how or what types of effects you need to consider if you want to do a good print. And uh, now we are showing you uh, how the printing looks like on the real machine provided by Hans Weber Maschinenfabrik. So you can see the robotic setup and we did some collaborative trials at the factory and we were able to yeah, really quite fast adapt uh, the iterations of the printing process. And you can see the simulation, also the real behavior of the machine. Uh, and because we do the simulation within the real environment, the virtual NC world, we can see that it e behaves exactly as we planned it. Back to you. Yes, thank you, Mark. Um, we actually can see that uh, the co collaborative um, approach that we chose here, so uh, the deep uh, collaboration between SWMS, Hans Weber, and the German Aerospace Center uh, led to, uh, to the, this result. Um, we also benefited here from um, the very effective process that Hans Weber offers. Um, it is based on a, a granule extruder uh, with a quite high output rate. Um, so all this printing was done in far less than one hour. Yeah, so there is a, a really effective and efficient way um, to, um, well, to additively functionalize such a structure. Afterwards, Mark already mentioned it, um, we also did some printing at um, the facility of, uh, of the DLR. Uh, we there used a peak material uh, provided by Enzinger, um, which shows that not only polyether emide can be printed, that was the one, uh, the material that was printed at uh, Hans Weber Maschinenfabrik. Um, and we also, Mark mentioned that as well, we added a final layer of continuous fiber reinforced material supplied by Supreme, uh, which shows that we can selectively reinforce um, actual load paths. And I want to show you just a quick video how it looks like uh, when we print continuous fiber reinforced. Black on black is always not that easy to see. Um, but there is a continuous fiber in there. So at the end, uh, we have this beauty here. Um, it shows that the additive functionalization process is an effective and efficient manufacturing process. It combines um, different materials. It combines thermal set, uh, a, a thermal setting structure with thermoplastic printing. And it combines different processes. So a conventional composite process and a quite new overprinting extrusion process. And it also, just by accident, more or less, it also shows that um, getting all our partners into there that this whole process is actually completely industrially available. But Mark, there is actually more to it? Yeah. So 
as you can see, we, are, we applied with this project for the Lower Saxony Innovation Award in the category of cooperation, and we got the award. And uh, this shows uh, yeah, what type of uh, accomplishment this is for such a great uh, big uh, community of uh, companies. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great uh, opportunity to show that this collaboration is actually worth and, and finding new innovative approaches. Um, I want to give you a take-home message. Um, I want to say the real value of additive manufacturing is probably not to replace excess, uh, existing and uh, conventional processes, especially in composite manufacturing. The real value of additive manufacturing from our side is that you can additively functionalize parts and structures that you already have. There is always the most fitting, the most suitable process and material to choose for every substructure. For any further questions, um, feel free to contact and to, to connect with all our partners. Uh, the majority of the partners is uh, here actually at Formnext this week. Um, Mark, where can we find SWMS? SWMS is located at Hall 1200 uh, booth D39. Mm -hmm. So um, Weber should also be here. Absolutely, Weber is also here. So I can really warmly recommend um, having a visit at uh, the booth of Hans Weber Maschinenfabrik, which is located here in this hall in 11.1 C41. That's just around the corner. So uh, if you have time right after this talk, um, head over there. There will always be uh, some colleagues who are um, well, who happily answer all of your questions. And if I'm correct, they also have the part, so and you correct. can see it in action. They have, uh, this part is displaced there, so uh, you can touch it, you can feel it, you can even have a closer look onto it uh, to see, for instance, the continuous fiber reinforced um, printing as well as the rip printing. That's actually a fascinating structure. Yeah. Saying this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to conclude this presentation. Thank you, Mark. It's been a pleasure. And thank you, Eric. Thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, for your very kind attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, both. So, thank plenty you. of ways to find out more information uh, on any of those booths. Um, but does anybody have a question right now for these two that can't wait? I have one question, which is yeah. the, the collaboration, is that still open or is that closed now? Have you got all the boxes? It is still open and it's still ongoing. So our lab manager is here in the first row, actually. Um, so if you're interested um, in a collaborative environment in the Empower X, um, well, ecosystem, mm -hmm. uh, you can definitely approach us, approach uh, Xenia, who is here in the first row. Um, as I said, it is still open, open to everyone. Yeah, uh, you can everyone. participate if you have a demo case or want to for use yeah, bring in your technology provider no, no, specific, specific technology or looking for exactly. expertise yeah. anybody okay perfect thank Thanks you very so much. much thank you thank you